Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me via Zoom is... Mr. Matt. Mr. Matt. Yep. Well, you know what, Mr. Matt? A horse is a horse, of course, of course. And no one can talk to a horse, of course. That is, of course, unless the horse is the famous Mr. Ed. <laughs> not sure if you knew that. No. No. I did not. Okay. Well, Mr. Matt, I'm Mr. Mike, and um, today we're talking about a unaired pilot shot in 2004. For the Fox Television Network, <sighs> called Mister Ed, mm. it was a remake or reboot or whatever of uh, the classic Alan Young starring TV series, Mister Ed, also yep. based on the uh, the uh, series of books that the television series was based on. Yep. Yep. And, uh... So this, uh... This project was... Um... Written by Drake Sather. Who, um... Worked on Zoolander. He co-created that character with uh, Ben Stiller. Um, he's also he also worked on uh, news radio and uh, the Larry Sanders Show, <laughs> um, the TV series Ed. Speaking of Mister Ed. <laughs> <laughs> He was the co-executive producer for 22 episodes of, of Ed. Um, Great show. Oh, yeah. Amazing show. That'll <laughs> probably never be streaming or on DVD because of music rights because it used, like, every yeah. every popular yeah. rock song or pop song at the time. Yeah. Anyways. Um, <laughs> it's on YouTube still, at least. Every episode's still up on YouTube. But So... Yeah. Go ahead and download it from your real downloader player or whatever. So yeah, in case you have it taken down. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> of YouTube, that's where we found this. Yep. Yes, and uh, Drake also wrote on Saturday Night Live, the Dennis Miller show. Wrote one episode of uh, Empty Nest. He was also a very talented stand-up comic. And yes, I am talking about him in the past tense, unfortunately. I'm going to start this thing on a downer here. Um, partially due to the uh, the creative pain that he suffered from this show, um, Drake shot himself in 2004. Yeah. Yep. Killed himself... Because partially because of this fucking show. Yeah. I mean, there's other stuff going on. He was going through a divorce and stuff like that. But yeah. <clears throat> but so I'm not saying that it was definitely because of the show, but it definitely played plus, a part. Plus, he, you know, he had he had mental issues, obviously, you know. So it's mm-hmm. like, you know, it's too bad. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Look up his stand-up comedy if you get a chance, people. He was funny. Um. 
So, on to the show, Matt. Mm. Um, what happens in this episode here? <clears throat> As a one and only episode? Yes. Um, that was on the air. Um, so, Wilbur decides to move his family outside of New York City to this farm town or whatever because you know his daughter was getting too crazy in NYC you know 15 year old daughter you know so you're thinking it's like a Dawson's Creek kind of situation you know like oh well you know she's having sex and going to parties no no she went to a club one club and he decides to move his family to a farm because of that and um and of course she hates it and all this, you know, typical teenager crap. And they go to the barn and like the dude who is like kind of like the handyman. By the way, who is that guy? He's very familiar. That's um like Gary Dillahunt. He um oh. Okay. So 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 okay, Wilbur in this episode is played by uh David Allen um Bash. Um I'm, I'm I'll go through a little bit of the cast here. Okay. Um he uh, he's an a- actor known for uh, TV shows like The X's and uh, Bull, and uh, he's been in a lot of movies and stuff too. So y- you you know him. He's kind of like this actor that shows up in a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, Garrett Dillahunt, who plays the the uh, handyman um, Jim Hendry, um, he probably best known for uh recently for um the tv show um what the hell is that called hold on sorry (laughs) yeah um oh he, he he's known for uh raising hope which uh Lasted from 2010 till 2014, where he played um, Burt Chance on there. It's probably what okay. he's best known for. He's uh, he uh, was also on Fear of the Walking Dead. Um, okay, yep. He had a recurring role on. Um, uh, that that I really liked him in was uh, was in uh, Terminator: The Sarah Connor Chronicles. Um, he was really good on that show. Um, he's been in like everything. This guy's been acting forever. He he was in Deadwood for years. He uh, he uh, was on One Life to Live for a year back in '93. Um, he uh, yeah. But he's been he's done everything from like NYPD Blue to ER <clears throat> to okay cool yeah so, so he, he's been in everything. Um, then we had uh, Sherilyn Fenn as Wilbur's wife, um, Carlotta, and Sherilyn Fenn is best known for. Twin Peaks. Um, she was in Wild at Heart. She was in um, The Wraith. She was in Of Mice and Men. She mm. uh, had a re- she had a recurring role on the TV series SWAT recently. She uh, yeah she was in the the reboot of Twin Peaks recently too. Um, so you know she. She's been in like a million things, you know. Sherilyn Fenn, she's great, you know. Mm-hmm. The daughter on the show is played by Sarah Paxton, who uh, has been in a lot of things, including Sleepover, a movie that we recently covered for the show. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's right. Sleepover. <laughs> yes. Wait, who was she in Sleepover? <clears throat> she was the, uh, the, like, um, popular girl that, uh, that, um, that her, uh, boyfriend tried to have sex with her in a car. That was her? Yeah. <laughs> Well, 2004 was a big, big year for her career. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's mean. Yeah, um, yeah. She was in that. She was in. Uh, she was also in Twin Peaks, the reboot. Oh, okay. So yeah, um, she was in. Um, she does a lot of voices on SpongeBob SquarePants. She she's in a lot of things. She's in the TV series. Uh, she was in an episode of the TV series Wrecked with, uh, with um, former uh, All Too Real 2 uh, guest um, Will McLaughlin. So there we go. Mm. So, <laughs> there's all these cool. connections, you know. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I wonder if she got the yeah. all time, I mean, the um, Twin Peaks reboot from working on this show because, you know, the other one, you know, is interesting. Like, could be. <clears throat> you know the Mister Ed, you know all, all the camaraderie that <laughs> that they made. You know the one episode they made for Mister Ed. Yeah. You know they all they all like this was like a traumatizing moment that you know shared shared trauma. You know creates this kind of bond. You know so. Um, so then Sherilyn <laughs> Fenn was like, "Hey, this girl that played my daughter on this uh, failed attempt at a yep. TV series. Yep. Um, I think she should be in the Twin Peaks reboot." Yeah. Seventeen years ago, or, mm-hmm. or sixteen years ago, whenever yeah. the reboot happened. Yep. So I'm trying. I'm I'm trying to stall to talk about what happens in this episode, but um, I, I guess I'll continue. Um, yeah. What what what, what, what? So so what goes on in this <clears throat> in this beautiful beautiful television series? Okay. So the the handyman, you know, is like they're they're trying to go f- through like a whole like gritty. You know, version of Mr. Ed, like like a pol- politically incorrect, like you know, like 2004. That was all the rage of like taking an old thing and like making it like super. You know, I don't know. I mean, I guess they do it now to making extent, it hit. Like, but bad. But back then they were really bad at it. Yeah, and um, because mm-hmm. they didn't really know what they were doing at, at, like 17 years ago. And yes, 2004 was 17 years ago. Hmm, that feels good. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yep, okay. Uh, best year of my life. Each each year the memories fade <laughs> to more abstract impressions. Anyway, um, I'm not depressed. Uh, I am, cunningly. Uh, okay, anyway, um, I'm just going to keep doing these caveats for the rest of the episode, by the way, just to avoid talking about this. So, um, the handyman guy is hilarious. Um He's like, what? What made you move to the, the murder capital or you know, kidnapping capital of the world? And they're like, and she's like, wait, what's that? And like the, the little brother's like, oh, can you believe it, Amanda? We're gonna get, we're so gonna get kidnapped, like all excited. And, well, you know, the mom's like, no, and like the guy's like nodding, like yeah, go ahead, they are. <laughs> like to Wilbur, like I don't know, he just he had a really good delivery. That guy, uh, just really good. Uh, Really good acting for this poor episode. Unfortunately, a lot of it was wasted. Um, oh yeah, and one thing that we need to mention too is that Mister Ed is voiced by Sherman Hemsley. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. As in, you know, known for the Jeffersons and as Mister Jefferson and uh, TV show Amen and among other millions of bazillion things that he was in. Yeah. Weird choice for the voice, but- though. But anyways. <laughs> So that's what they're going for the whole like modern like try to be hmm. cool and weird you know type mm-hmm. of thing <clears throat> and so he le- the, the the handyman leaves after he says basically they're gonna get kidnapped and also makes soft propositions to Wilbur's wife like saying that he'll come to her windowsill and weird crap like that and then they leave and then Wilbur says something, I don't remember what, and they leave, and then um, Mr. Ed so- says something like, I, I, who are you talking about, blah, 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 I, I get more play than P. Diddy, or, I'm like, oh my god, this is so 2004. <laughs> and then it, like, then it plays, like, some typical, like, alternative rock, 
early 2000s type of theme song, you know, like, like Mr. Red, you know, whatever type of thing. Stupid song. No no offense to the writers, but it was, it was a dumb song. And, um, and then nothing happens for the rest of the show, and that's it. So we don't need to talk about it. No. <laughs> um, well, we, okay, we have this uh, thing where, okay, so um, the, the main plot of the show is that uh, the daughter... Uh, Amanda is the character's name. Um, um, you know, is starting, you know, her new school or whatever, and I guess she, she has a thing for a guy, which, uh, Mr. Ed overhears, basically. Um, it, it, the, the, the basic plot is that, uh, the dad is trying to get closer to his daughter because mm-hmm. they've, you know, you know, become distant because of, you know, her growing up and changing and all that stuff like kids do. And, you you know, at, when you're a teenager, it's like, ew, my dad's a, you know, dork, you know, sort of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because um, that's how I talked when I was a teenager. I don't know about you. I used to I be like... Remember. I used to be like, <laughs> ew, my dad's a dork and I'm going to talk like this. No, I never talked like that. No, <laughs> neither did I. But I just. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so it uh, basic idea is that they're trying to get closer. Um, she uh, they basically decide to get closer by uh, I mean, okay, so we we have the basic concept though earlier on that uh, you know, Wilbur dis- discovers that. Mr. Ed can talk and, you know, throughout the episode he tries to convince some other people that he can talk, but Mr. Ed will never talk in front of anybody besides Wilbur. Hey. Just like in the original show, you know. So, um, the, um, Mr. Ed basically tries to help, uh, Wilbur get closer to Amanda. Um, he convinced, uh, Wilbur convinces Amanda to go on a, you know, horse ride, and while they're riding Mr. Ed, um, Mr. Ed is, like, basically talking to Wilbur and filling him in on all this stuff that he uh, knows about the town and knows about Amanda from overhearing conversations. And so it kind of helps uh, Wilbur get closer. Um, She likes this boy, and wants to kind of go out with him. Uh, and uh, Mr. Ed knows that the guy's no good. So he calls up the kid and pretends to be Wilbur and threatens him if he tries to go out with uh, Amanda. <laughs> you know. Like often happens because, you know, the reason I never had a girlfriend that long in high school was mm-hmm. because my cat used to call up the girls and um and tell the tell them not to date me. It makes sense. I mean, that that's the only explanation that makes any sense to me. All of our pets, you know, they they like us, so they don't want us to be, you know, taken away from them, you know, shared with other people. So mm-hmm. they're like, "Hey, man, like, I'm gonna make you taste hoof or or um, boot." Boot. That's yeah. what he said. Yeah. Like, okay. God, this show is bad. I just watched it. I still can't remember what just happened. It's like, there, there's certain shows we watch that are like that, where you can watch it three times, and everything just leaves your mind. Yeah. And other things you watch one time, you remember almost everything. I literally just finished watching it again, like, a half hour ago. And I'm, like, blanking on most of what happened, which, by the <laughs> way, almost nothing in the show... <clears throat> Maybe that's why, because nothing happened. So, like, what? There's some raccoons in the house at one point. Right? Yeah, there's this going gag where, where um, Jim Hendry, the handyman, is getting raccoons out of the house, which comes into play later. He needs peanut butter. Yeah, right. Yeah, he yeah, the, the, yeah. He uses yeah. peanut butter to catch them, which will come into play later as well. Um, yep. Yep. Um, <laughs> 
Okay, so so basically, the the boy tells Amanda that uh, you know, her dad threatened threatened him, and uh, so to make up for it, they invite the kid over for uh, for dinner. Um, yeah. Do you want to take a break and we'll talk about the rest of what happens in this, Matt? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we we we. we, we We'll make it enjoyable for you, Matt. I swear. <laughs> you know, when we come back, we may have like you know a special guest or something. Okay. We might. We might not too. But you know. Okay. Stay tuned, folks, and you'll find out. What is Gen X? What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice Podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And, as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And let's see how much we have in common after all. Hi, this is Catherine, host of a new fashion podcast, The Real Fashion School Dropout. Join me as I interview guests every week in the fashion and beauty space and we gossip on all things fashion and beauty and even get into some personal stories of their journey in the industry. You can find us on Apple, Spotify, pretty much wherever you get your podcast. Hope to see you there. We're back. Okay, back. so um, we do have a special guest here with us. Oh yeah. I invited my uh, my my talking cat. Oh, yes, yes. I'm um, going to talk about what uh, what he thought of the episode. Okay. Yeah, my cat's name is Spot. Cool. Okay. So if you have any questions for my cat, Matt, go ahead and ask. Um, why did I decide to pick this show for this week? Meow. <laughs> Meow. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand that language. Meow. Oh, okay. So, what? Do you have any other questions? Because that that was no. very very insightful, which Spot just told you. No, that was pretty much it. Okay, let, let, let me ask Spot. Spot, do you like Matt? No, no, no. Um, <clears throat> whatever. So, it, I, I'm sorry that that Spot said that about you, Matt. I'm. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've heard worse, so it's not a big deal. Really. Well, you know. Can't I don't like it. I I just can't I believe. Like I don't like this game anymore. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't like the cat? No, not this. Not the cat game. But 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 he's nice. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, All right. Technically. Alright, I guess I'll just go have him euthanized. No, don't do that. Why not? Don't don't get him don't kill him. Oh. But but I, <clears throat> if you don't like him, I gotta do something about him, you know, I gotta get rid of him then or something. What's well, that it's not that I mean my opinion doesn't really matter that much on it. I mean I mean it's your it's your talking cat, so you know it's kind of up to you really. Are you sure? 
I think we're derailing this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 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 um, all right. Okay, s- say goodbye, Spot. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, um, so what what happens next in this episode here, Matt? Uh, um, so stupid. <clears throat> so they uh they're, they're at dinner and Dad's like trying to apologize to the dude, but he's like saying weird shit like how do you like that corn it's uh fresh and what we say and young and definitely underage it's like it's just creepy yeah then, okay. like, well, well it's because he notices the kid grabbing uh grabbing the knee of his daughter and stuff oh, okay so, yeah. yeah that's right and then um so his wife makes him apologize the kid makes up some bullshit story about how his, how his dad was killed by a tornado, or at least was, re, you know, took off by a tornado, whatever. And then, um, and then they leave, and then the guy, the kids like, or the guys like, "Hey, you want to meet me outside the in the barn, you know, later, or whatever?" And she's like, "I don't know." Blah blah blah. Turns out the tornado story was total bullshit. Of course it was. And then, um. And then he's like, I don't have a curfew. My dad's a U.S. Marshal or something like that, whatever. And then, so, he goes in, the dad goes in the bar, and Mr. Ed um, basically tells him, or I think he over I don't know. He overheard, the, the, con- con- he overheard the conversation, so he tells Wilbur okay. all about it. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, he's basically telling, you know, Wilbur to go all crazy. By the way, so earlier, and this is kind of, backtracking a little bit, but but earlier um, Mr. Ed was like you gotta, so I read this, this I swear to god <clears throat> this is a, okay, this is a kind of a, a weird tangent here, but um, there's like been this weird thing, generational thing that's been going on for the past, I don't know, 10 or so years, where like people will mishear words but, like, they'll interpret it completely wrong to the point where it makes no sense at all. Like, I think it's generational things. I don't remember when I was a kid, uh, teenagers or adults doing this as much. It seems like from my generation and onward, we started hearing words wrongly, but then interpret them in ways that made no logical sense whatsoever. Like, so, like, someone wrote down like one of the reviews by the way there's like very few reviews on google i I found about this show yeah but one of them was that mr red was telling you know wilbur to you know and keep his daughter on lockdown and all this kind of shit you know it's basically like you gotta make sure your daughter's pure and er, you know type of thing and he's like lock her in a lock her in a room chop her hair off make her ugly and then make her stay in there until she's 21 Okay, so we're imprisoning daughters now. Is this like Saudi Arabia? Like, what? Okay. Anyway, um, and like, which, you know, literally one of the princesses in Saudi Arabia literally is currently locked in the hotel they or, or like in the palace, like they've been for like two or three years now. Anyway, so I'm not, I'm well, not making well, like, yeah, I know. <laughs> French statement against Saudi Arabia like, literally happens in Saudi Arabia. Like, there's currently two princesses that are locked in the palace. Anyway, and uh, and so someone wrote in the review that quoting Mr. Ed saying, "Put her in a room, chop her head off, make her ugly, keep her in there for t- until she's 21." Um, if you chop someone's head off, they're dead. So it doesn't matter that you wait until she would be 21 because she's dead now after you yeah. decapitate your daughter. Pretty so, sure the body will be like, fully de- decomposed by so that. So it's um, like one thing its one thing to mishear a word, but then to a completely not see any logical flaw in how you interpret that word that you mishear. Like chopping someone's head off doesn't make them ugly. I mean, I guess technically it is, but that's not like – the prime <clears throat> reason. I, I, I don't know about like you, but I don't think I'd date someone without a head. I wouldn't either. I mean, you know, maybe that's being rude, but no, I would not do that. And, um, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of one of the requirements I have for a girlfriend. Yeah. I mean, I'm not exactly a catch myself. I do have a head on my shoulders. Yeah. Literally speak. 
Maybe not so much metaphorically, but definitely in the physical mm-hmm. department of that word. Anyway, so... and, and and I use Head and Shoulders, so um, okay, shampoo. Well, cool. So you know, so it's all good. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> I I sometimes <clears throat> because if, you know. If, Whatever, just it's there. I buy it. I'm like, oh, that seems kind of cool. I'll use that. Then I realize I don't like the smell of it, so I'm like, God damn it, I don't want to do this anymore. So like, I'll use like the cool fructose. Like, like I'm weird when it comes to shampoo. Like, I like nice shampoo. Like, like I mean, I don't, I don't get expensive shampoo that often, but mm-hmm. like, you know, I wouldn't say that the fructose fructose is exactly expensive, but it's more expensive than like the dollar bullshit. Like, no, I like the smell nice. I like to feel nice. Um, if I had it my way, I would buy some of that really expensive shit that's like 80 bucks a bottle. But no, no dice. Can't you know what you that. should try? Uh, mane, mane and tail. Okay. And the reason I say that is because it's probably what Mr. Head uses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, when, get, when he's getting groomed and, and cleaned up and stuff like my that. My mom so used anyway. to use that stuff. Anyway, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, and Mr. Red tells, you know, Wilbur, and then like, Wilbur's like, I got a better idea, and he sees all these, um, is it raccoons? No, badgers. Was it badgers? or ra- Raccoons, I think. Raccoons that were in the cage. Yeah, because cause the handyman said that he was going to keep them in the barn until the next day to uh, take them out into the, the country and just kind of... Well, they already live in the country, but I guess this is like the country of the country. So, like, yes. complete, complete boonies, like, and just kind of set them free or whatever. And so Wilbur, this time it was Wilbur that had, like, the devious plan or whatever. And he's like, I got a better idea. And so their idea is to lure Amanda's pseudo-boyfriend or whatever, because, like, they've only lived there for a day. So I'm not sure how you can have a boyfriend after you've only known someone for a day. But whatever, okay. I mean, teenagers work fast, I guess. So I don't know. And then, um, so... Mr. Ed is pretending to be Amanda in order to lure in her boyfriend. Yes. And he's like trying to talk like, you know, like a feminine type of, you know, voice, which is very hard. Well, not just feminine, but high pitched, which is very hard because the actor has a low voice. Yeah. Kind of like I do. And so he's like, come in, you know, whatever, trying to, you know, talk all sexy or whatever. And he's like, what happened to your voice? And he's like, I just got my tongue pierced, which I'm not sure how having your tongue pierced would make you have a different timbre in your voice and tone and lower octaves. Okay. Um, and, and have like a more booming baritone kind of voice. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, but this, um, this kid's trying to get laid, so he doesn't care. <laughs> you know, basically. Uh, he just wants to get laid. Yeah. I mean, like, did Amanda take, like, a big shot of testosterone on the way, too, to, like, get, get, like, a more, you know, like, masculine voice? I mean, I'm not sure if that even does that. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not an expert on, on hormone replacement theory, therapy, so I really shouldn't, you know, speak on that. So I'm not, you know, a scholar on that. I'm not even being sarcastic either when I say right, that. Right, no. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, I know that can get, make you build muscles real good, stuff like that. So anyway, um, have you ever seen some transgender men before? Fucking bodybuilders? It's like, oh, I know. Yeah. Like, you know, they can beat the shit out of me, you know? I mean, it's like... <laughs> um, anyway, so, like, he's like, what's happened to your voice, blah, 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 blah. And then Mr. Ed's telling him to slather peanut butter, well, first, first get it down to his underwear. And then to slather peanut butter all over his body. Again, this was a 2004 show that was meant to be on Fox. Mm-hmm. Regular cable. Not, not not Showtime. Not regular cable, regular TV. It's not regular TV. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, not it's even it's network, yeah. network television. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this was supposed to be on the Fox network. Again, Fox back then was trying to be edgy. I mean, they've always been. That's yeah. kind of one of the reasons. Well, they've been edgy before. since the beginning. I mean, their their first yeah. successful show was Married with Children. So, I mean. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's always been like their shtick mm-hmm. or whatever. And my opinion, they've always been the worst of all the networks, but that's whatever. Um, and, I mean, they've had a few good shows like Brooklyn Nine-Nine, stuff like that. Um, yeah. Which they really, stupidly good can- chance, which they Which they canceled and then got picked up by NBC. So. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so whatever. And um, it, it, he's like, are you sure about this? And then Mr. Red's like, just do it, bitch. I'm like, okay, this is getting 
aggressively weird here. And then, you know, they sick the badgers, the raccoons, all over the, the kid, possibly giving him rabies, which is fun, I guess. I think it's a felony, if considering if he's underage, that you're 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 committing violence and potentially poisoning a child. Well, um, but okay, and well, yeah, but <laughs> but <clears throat> you know, just saying. He was trying to get with the little girl, so I mean, I'm just saying. No, anyway, trying to so- get with the father, I understand. <laughs> you know, he's trying to be a protective father. I mean, this was 2004, after all. This was mm-hmm. kind of in the beginning stage of, like, trying to be woke or whatever, but this was still, like, on the heels from, like, the 90s, so you still had that kind of, like, did my daughter, you, you're, you better, I'm going to meet you out with the shotgun or whatever type, I don't know, whatever, you know. Kind of, I, I'm just making stuff up, but whatever, because I don't want to talk about the show. And um, <laughs> so, so he gets attacked, and potentially dies from rabies, bites and bites and to his other private parts. So not only that, but bites to his private parts might cause severe and potentially permanent injuries to his male organ, which would could potentially prevent him from ever having children. So I'm not sure if that was really a fitting punishment for dating. A high school student when he's also a high school student, but eh, whatever. You know, I guess that's what they do in the country. You know, they kind of don't mess around when it comes to that kind of thing. No, it yeah. could be the reason. Like, there's so much, you know, macho and, you know, kind of that sort of, you know, violence in the country might stem from that kind of, you know, you don't get any second chances. You get one chance, and if you blow it, you know, a raccoon's going to bite your penis. I mean, that's, you know, that's the way it goes, I guess. Um, that's how it happens. I mean, you know, the yeah. number of people I've talked to have had their penises bitten by ra- raccoons. <laughs> you know, yeah. Is All, it, I mean, it's... Like, like everybody I know that lives out in the country has at least had one raccoon bite their penis. I wouldn't, I would not doubt it. Um, I mean, and, and even if they don't have penises, they still bite their penises. It's it's a weird thing. I don't know how that happens, but they just. They just grow one right at that moment <laughs> <laughs> just to get bit. <laughs> that's, that's I, I mean, I mean, I mean we, we've all heard the classic song, A Raccoon Bit My Penis, right? Yes. It's a famous song that was just written now in my mind. Yeah, and, um, it, was, it was a country song. It was. I, I, I think Blake Shelton did a cover of it a few years ago. <laughs> Wait, no, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what happened. And, yep, um, uh-huh. God damn. Um, so, oh, God. And I know I'm missing a bunch of stuff here, but who cares? It doesn't and, matter. Um, <laughs> I, know there was, there, I know there was some cool stuff with the handyman. Oh, yeah, because he, he was being suspicious that Wilbur was talking to himself, and then at first, that's what he thought, but then he's like, are you talking to the horse? And he's like, oh, no, and blah, 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 or whatever. He's like, there's something going on with you and the horse. Like, yeah, it's not not sex weird, but there's definitely something weird going on with you and the horse or whatever. Because he was gonna go. Just t- okay, there was, a, there was there was a funny line here where he's gonna take him out, you know, to have him euthanized. And the the younger brother's like, are you taking to a petting zoo? He's like, uh, yeah, if you like petting dog food. <laughs> <laughs> Like, okay, so there was one funny line. And, 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 um, so that, you know, I, I like that one. That was okay. And uh, That's my other favorite uh, country song. Petting Dog Food? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Trey Sadkins, yeah, ca- ca- you know, made that song popular back in the 90s. It was great. I like Petty ever since my, <laughs> ever since a raccoon bit my penis. Now I do is pet dog food. I don't know. Yeah, I, I gotta work on the rhythm, but, but <laughs> so what um, are we talking about? I don't know. <laughs> so, anyways, the the, the episode kind of ends with uh, with um, with the girl saying that you know she doesn't want to have anything to do with him anymore because he's crazy, and uh, the the boy, and uh, that she's found a new guy and he's oh yeah. But he's 25, but he's in the same grade as me. Which is not even possible at all. Yeah. Um, 
there's a certain they age you out at a certain point if you don't graduate high school. Like, yeah, they they make I mean, you, they make you go get, like go, get, go get your GED or whatever, or take night school. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think you could be a teenager and that's it. If you if you're like 20 and you're still not, then they just kick you out. Yeah. <laughs> Because I've known some people who are 19 because the way their birthday landed. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, that's happened before. So, like, but, um... I mean, I was 18, like, <coughs> my, my, I was 18 my whole senior year because of my birthday. But, uh, yeah. Right, yeah. Because in August, my birthday's in October, so I was pretty much 18 for most of, of my senior year as well. But, um, what was I going to say? Um... Oh yeah, so like the the line though at the end, it was weird. I mean, they're trying to go through some weird implication here, mind you. The daughter's fifteen years old, and we keep watching these movies again. This is not my intention. I think it was just the, the time because a lot of these things came out well, in two thousand four. Well, well, the thing like, the thing is, is like the same like girl in Sleepover, the same actress, had a boyfriend try to have sex with her in a car, <laughs> like basically in the middle of. Times Square, yeah, and um, the and he, and he was like, and he was like older too. I mean, I, well, I the act, the actor was, but not the uh, character. Oh, probably. the character wasn't okay. Probably and, not. Uh, <clears throat> well, a lot of the things we've been watching lately were like that came out from like the two thousand and stuff and like late nineties. Like, I never realized like how inappropriate some of these jokes were at the time. Probably because I was that age at the time, right? So I didn't really think of it, you know. Or I didn't even like know what the jokes were even like referring to or whatever, you know. Yeah. But like some of these things we watched, I was like, like, or not, not, just, not just the jokes, just what's happened in the movie. Like for example, um, uh, Yancey and the, and the fat guy, you know, from that that was one of our band names we came up with, Yancey and the fat guy. Yeah. He's like, obviously at least nineteen or eight. No, because he works at a bar, um, setting up sound equipment, and like. These by mind you, these in sleepover, not this, not this show. Mind you, these girls. It's summertime, but it's summer from the eighth grade going into the ninth grade. Yeah, <laughs> and so they're not even freshmen in high school yet. And and by the way, what like the weird thing about this stuff is like they weren't even like doing that to be creepy. Like that was the like, that was what made it weirder. Was like they weren't even I like. Mean- in all in all these in all these movies and TV shows, there's always like that that girl who has the college boyfriend. I didn't know too many of them when I was in high school. Yeah. I don't know about you. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, yeah, I mean, I've seen it so many times in movies, and, and plus two in Spy High, which you just recently released. That one, the the, the guy is 16 years old. Yeah, and he's trying and to get with like a older girl. And supposedly he has this online girlfriend who's like looks obviously she looks like she's in her mid twenties. Like I mean the actress at least. Um, yes. And, and and obviously she is because it was, well if you watched it by the way, that episode's hilarious. I mean I don't like to toot our own horns. That sounded really weird. I don't <laughs> But yeah, make sure you go back and listen to um listen to uh our spy high episode. I think it's I think it's hilarious. It is hilarious. Yes. But but there's something that gives away the fact that this is not just the actress, but the character she's playing is definitely at least in her very late, early 20s, at the very least. Yeah. Like, we're talking 23, 24. Just to pet, based on her career, you'll understand. I don't want to give it away, but you'll yeah. understand. Just, just listen watching. to the episode and you'll, you'll understand it. Um, but again, yeah. with that show was, again, it, it wasn't. It, it wasn't even portrayed as being like they weren't like doing it like <laughs> like you know it was just like that was just part of the story mm-hmm. and, but still it's like that's kind of weird though like like you don't see how that could be weird like <laughs> anyway um, so I, I went off track which is like okay. I tend to do so things. anyways um, do you want to take a break I make one point. okay I go ahead and make more. a point before we take a break oh, okay because yeah. that's what I was that's what I was building up to and then I, I totally took it off the track so she, she's like, she tells her dad, you know, like, yeah, like he turns out to be a complete freak show. He accused me of being uh, a dominate, dominatrix that's like has a weird fetish for peanut butter. And she's like, I don't even like peanut butter. So it's like, okay, that's weird. Like, so, you, but you're saying that you, okay, that you are a dominatrix, like, okay, and uh, it, 
and they just like left that said like nobody got the joke apparently it's like um, yeah okay yeah well we'll take a break now okay good okay <laughs> yeah yeah so because that was basically the episode of that wonderful television show and uh we'll be right back and we'll read a couple reviews maybe and talk have, have some other uh thoughts here we'll be right back it's the ninja from the asked angry ninja show saying come listen to the show we got the ninja wife to give you your movie reviews we got the conscript to give you the ninja news and we got the battle to talk about your sports and as always it is the ask the angry ninja show so ask me a question and we'll give you the ninja knowledge you need for your ninja life search for us Anywhere you get your podcast from, just search for the Ask the Anger Ninja Show and enjoy the show. And we are back. Meow. Yeah, go away. Oh. Okay. Anyway, so uh, um, <laughs> don't talk to you right now, Spot. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> Spot, go. Meow. Yeah, go. Yo. Okay. Good. <laughs> go. Okay. Talk anyway. to you later. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so um, ah, fucking cat. Anyways um. I have to have him euthanized. Um, no. No? Are you sure? Oh. Okay, I won't. All right. So, um, <laughs> I noticed uh, looking at the credits for this show that one of the uh, one of the executive producers of this episode was Jack Handy, as in Deep Thoughts by Jack Handy from Saturday Night Live, <laughs> Jack Handy fame. Um, mm-hmm. So I decided I need to read my favorite Jack Handy Deep Thought. One thing's kids like to to be is uh, one thing's okay. I'm gonna start over. One thing kids like is to be tricked. For instance, I was going to take my little nephew to Disneyland, but instead I drove him to an old burned out warehouse. Oh no! I said Disneyland burned down. He cried and cried, but I think that deep down he thought it was a pretty good joke. I started to drive to the real Disneyland. But it was getting pretty late. Wow. That's my favorite deep thought by Jack Handy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so cruel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. So, um... Yeah, the, um... The, we've got, like, um... There's a couple of, um reviews on uh, of this uh by the way if if you're interested in in watching this um probably should have said this at the top of the episode um you know it's on youtube so go ahead and watch it there you know so look it up you did mention it actually earlier did i did i okay good i was just making sure so yeah it was never aired on television so it's you know kind of hard to find sometimes um some of these things that we're watching are really hard to find, like the next one we're going to record. But um, I'll uh, mm. I'll make that available to people. Okay, so um, the uh, this one review. So we got like two really long reviews. So I'm not even going to really read much of them. But yeah, so basically, I'm just going to let you know that we've got a four out of ten. And a three out of ten, which are a lot higher than I thought they'd get. <laughs> wow. Um, I'll read the one. Um, it says, "Now that they're trying to revive Mr. Ed, perhaps the they'll next try doing the same with my mother, the car, and me, and the chimp." Those were also television series, by the way. Wow. Yeah, my mother, the car, um, was. The most interesting concept for a television series ever, Matt. Have you ever heard of this? <laughs> no. Okay. The, 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 the show starred Jerry Van Dyke, who was later on Coach and stuff. This was around the same time as uh, Mr. Ed. The concept was Jerry's mom dies and is reincarnated as a car. Okay. A talking car. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so the concept was kind of similar to Mr. Ed, except for there was a talking car that also happened to be the lead character's dead mo- mom. So. Oh. Uh, 
That's weird. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we will need to find the pilot to that and watch it sometime for this show, I think. Yeah, it sounds yeah. a lot more interesting than what we just... Yeah. About. Um, so, um, I don't know what Me and the Chimp was about, but I'll look it up someday. Um, anyway, so, uh, okay, he says... Um, this guy is Martin Haffer. Um, he says... It's rather hard to imagine anyone trying to revive the series, Mr. Ed. After all, the show was likable, but kind of dopey, um, such as the time Ed the Horse tried out for the L.A. Dodgers. Um, and the concept was very, very limited. I mean, how much can you do with a show about a talking horse? Yet, despite this, the original show being the butt of jokes some thought reviving the show with this 2004 pilot was a good idea fortunately the networks didn't think this was a great idea and the series was never made <laughs> the show begins with wilbur pope me- moving his family out to the country um blah 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 da, da, dee, 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 dee. i'm not gonna rehash the whole episode like we did um well the 60s mr ed was silly the new attempt to revive the series is a bit different in style. The new one is filled with one-liners, like Mr. Pope is a frustrated stand-up comic, and as a result, the laugh track is more obvious and invasive. It wasn't mm-hmm. horrid, but it also wasn't very good. In the 50s and 60s show, the main, the man was named Wilbur Post. However, he was Wilbur Pope in the original pilot episode from 1958, and the new uh, proposed series... Um, chose this original name um, and not the familiar one. That's all he's got here. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so that that's what we got. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. It wasn't good. Anyway, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> would you recommend anybody watch this, Matt? God. Um, no. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, Do you think this show, if it would have aired, could have lasted a whole season? In 2004, uh, absolutely not. Um, Yeah. I mean, okay, I'll give it a pass because, like I said, 2004 was, like, a really good year for me, so I have, like, these weird feelings while watching it because I could definitely feel some like 2004 type of humor but like done very badly basically but like I remember shows that did this humor kind of humor much better yeah so like I I have like some weird like uh, just a very tinge of nostalgia while watching it Not, not, not real nostalgia because the show's a terrible piece of shit or horse shit rather um Ooh, hoo, hoo. that was funny. That, that was, really. that, that was and, good, um, Matt. Yeah. yeah, it was great. No, just go know, away. Thanks, oh. Spot. Appreciate the comment. Okay, and yeah. um, <laughs> appreciate it. But um, appreciate your feedback. Um, yeah. As uh, a certain um, electronic musician is is wont to say, and is really due for a new song to be put out. It's been a while since that person has put out a new track. Anyway, who's um, that? Yeah, I, I don't know the name. Something about some. Electronic step something, electro pop, Mark. Don't remember the name. Um, oh, dubstep Matt. Is that who it is? Oh, yeah. yeah I think something like yeah, some weird, some some weird um, fake musician. That's definitely not me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, I mean, I guess like. It's not that long, okay? It's only... T- it's, like, between the the intro with the DVD thing and the outro, it's probably only, like, 18 minutes and, like, yeah. 40 seconds long. So it's, like, if you got the time and you don't have anything better to do and you're not really taking that time away from something that you could be doing that's actually productive or, at the very least gives you a certain sense of pleasure um then go ahead and and watch it it's not terrible i mean it's it is but it's not we've 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 talked about things that are actually worse than this if that's even possible 
Yeah, but, um, we have. <laughs> so, I mean, if you're into that sort of thing, early 2000s, you know, uh, weird, gritty, politically incorrect humor that's done very horribly, um, bad CGI, bad Yeah, jokes. that's the other thing. They use this weird CGI on Mr. Ed's face that was very it was much, it, 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 you know, I mean, well, at least it was a lot better than what they did in the original series where I guess they had used some people said they used peanut butter to make him talk but something but yeah. I've also heard and I'm not sure if these rumors are true that they actually um like put a needle and thread into his mouth oh with Jesus. like with like fishing line and moved his mouth that way <clears throat> that's terrible yeah that's true so whatever it was they were probably cruel to the horse in some way I'm sure um, yeah, it was before they had those kind of yeah laws. I'm sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there, there's that. So um, anyways, um, my thing is, is if you if you feel like watching something funny with like talking animals, you know, watch Doctor Doolittle with Eddie Murphy. You know, I'm just yeah. saying it's, 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 it's a lot a better. It's a decent movie. Um, it, it's a lot better than this. Um, yeah. And it's from around the same, you know, time frame. So, you know, that's what I recommend. Um, so, uh, anything else before we wrap things up here, Matt? No. Okay, so um, I just want to, you know, ask my my our listeners i should say our listeners some 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 um personal favor go to go to apple podcast give us a review you know please yes i don't please. care if it's a good or Appreciate a bad it. review just give us a review um and yeah you could totally say that we're pieces of shit and you know we should stop doing this podcast call us pieces of horse shit it. you know or pieces of horse shit yeah and that we should stop we should just turn tail, <laughs> get it? Yep. And, and and run, you know, into a different project. But go ahead and you can say that. We should we, we should we should change horses midstream if you want us to. Yes, that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> and you know, you you could tell us like, hey, you know, we're not, you know, we're we're taking this too far, and that you know, you could say, well, we we tried we tried to warn. We try to warn them to not get too crazy with their podcast, but you can lead a horse to the water, but you know, you know, can't make them make a drink. I mean, we could do this all day, as Captain America would say. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that rhyme by accident. And um, yes, yeah, do this all day. Yep. <clears throat> do it until we have yep. to put the horses away, man. And um, <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. You know. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> so yep. anyways, make sure you do that, folks. Um, share the show with your friends um, if you like us. And if you don't, you know, maybe share it with your enemies. And, um... Yeah. <laughs> be like, here's something to listen to. Um, anyway, so, uh... Yeah, yep. um, check out our Patreon. Check out our Tee Public. It's all in the, in the show notes for this episode. Um, you know, check out Matt's music. Um check out some uh you know check out some checks from the czech republic or some czech cereal <laughs> or uh you know check out your checkbook and make sure that it, nobody's you know using your checks illegally <laughs> and um you know <clears throat> stuff like that play some checkers if you want yeah, yeah um you know stuff like that um anyways yeah. um i've been michael e Cullen the second and I've been Mr. Matt. <laughs> the, the first. <laughs> Spot better not be making fun of me right now. <laughs> Can I kill him? Well, I'll, I'll do that for you. I'll euthanize him. No, don't. Oh, wait, no. Don't euthanize animals, people. Okay. Anyways, unless they're really no. unless they're really sick and they need to be put out of their misery, you know, because that's well, probably better. For them yeah, than, that's different. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> you got like an old dog and you want to put them down. That's fine, you know, whatever. Um, so um, <laughs> well, depends on the context. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying if he's you know 
if he's yeah. sick and he, yeah. you know, can't walk anymore or something, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so <laughs> this is getting weird. So, um, <laughs> getting weird? It's been weird the whole episode, Mike. Anyways, I'm so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, have fun, folks. You know, be safe. You know, wear a mask, get vaccinated, mm-hmm. wear yeah. a fucking condom. Yep. <laughs> Bye bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.